I hate my flesh. John chapter 12 verse 25 says, Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Ouch, that certainly rubs against the cultural thinking of today. Most venues of modern culture deceptively advance the ideology, or should I say, idiotology, of love yourself. Let's face it, history reveals that we live in the most self-centered culture in world history to date. The sense is that whoever is so in love with this present cultural life is the more successful at living life, not. While each might be having a love affair with the flesh, the reality is that they are tampering with exposing themselves to the dangers of eternal damnation. Any so-called believer who is having a seductive relationship with the deeds of the flesh is practicing spiritual masturbation. Masturbation is classically associated with stimulating the genitals with the hand for self-pleasure. This is not entirely true. The word derives from two words, master and bait. The concept came from Latin to explain the ideology of being self-master, of baiting oneself to commit sin. While self-stimulation has been around since humanity, the most common view is that it is connected to sexuality. The original history has a much darker side. In ancient Egypt, the devil god, Master Atum, that's A-T-U-M, was believed to bring the universe into existence by masturbating to ejaculation. That's beyond weird. The Greeks believed that their god, Pan, tempted a shepherd boy by baiting him to play with his penis while the half-goat, half-man god played his flute, thus establishing the connection between music and immorality. Soon, Societies began connecting master to baiting to show reverence to the creator, Atom, to that of Pan, sexual appetites of the flesh. Pantheism was born to excuse the appetites of the flesh. Pantheism is a belief that the universe and the cosmos are identical to divinity and a supreme being of entity. The physical universe is thus understood as being from the eminent creator atom, still expanding and creating, which has existed since the beginning of time. The original pantheists supported both that everything constitutes a unity and that this unity is divine consisting of an all-encompassing, manifest god or goddess that is classically bonded in sexuality. While modern culture adheres to masturbation being associated with self-sexual pleasure, the view Satan holds is not only dark, but it clearly reveals his focus on the need for spiritual master bait shun, to shift the masses to worship Satan through masturbating the deeds of the flesh. To keep things simple, the reality of Paul's passage of the deeds of the flesh, most acts are directly related to sexuality and idol worship. In Galatians 5 verses 19 through 21, 
It says, now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. The bottom line is that the deeds of the flesh are directly related to the obsession of masturbation, spiritually, psychologically, and physically. The end result of masturbation is self-pleasure in all three dimensions. God's enemy uses this to masturbate humanity. The enemy's end goal to shift the masses to bow at his feet and worship his deplorable image, self as God. Sexuality was meant for procreation. The sin hidden behind Satan's deception regarding masturbation is simple. God told Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply the earth. Sexual desires in its organic state were implanted in humanity to fulfill such a mandate. As Satan's norm, he shifts the sexual pleasure onto oneself, causing sexuality to turn from pleasing God by honoring his purpose for sexuality to that of keeping the genitals happy. History notes that this shift primarily occurred during the early years of the Babylonian culture, when Nimrod and his wife slash mother formed gods and goddesses. If you study the early beliefs of gods and goddesses, you will discover that sexuality is the foundation of spiritual beliefs. Paul's statement that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God reveals our thesis. While it seems like a harsh conclusion, it shows us that the deeds of the flesh are directly related to serving a different God, the father of the deeds of the flesh, Satan. I can assure you that anyone who serves any other God beside the God, the Father of Jesus, will indeed go to the place the Master, Bader, will live for eternity, hell. I conducted a two-year observation study of culture, church, political, and domestic crimes that popped up on the Internet. My findings revealed that most of the deplorable deeds related to these news items were motivated by sexual pleasures, rape, adultery, sex trafficking, abortion, jealousy, and other immorally related ideologies. The National Sexual Violence Center confirmed my findings. While their statistics are related to rape and sexual abuse, the National Police Commission reveals that most crimes reported are indeed sexually motivated in some manner or another. My belief? The deeds of the flesh are entirely connected to the global crime rate, which is centered on the list Paul provided us in Galatians chapter 5. So what is sexual immorality? We first must look at the definition of morality. In the secular, it is principles concerning the distinction between right and wrong, or good and bad behavior. Well, that's nice. However, that begs the question, who determines what right and wrong is. 
I looked that one up as well. Sackiller says it is according to the individual self-conscience. That leaves us with an obvious. All Satan has to do is degenerate the conscience into being seared for an evil conscience. These are people who lie to themselves and others. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 through 3 reveals this. Now the Spirit expressedly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons through the insincerity of liars whose consciences are seared, who forbid marriage and require abstinence from foods that God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Conscience derives from science, the belief in the things proven by sight. The Greek word, sunidesis, means co-perception. The connection is in believing moral values by an existing originator. In our case, God. We call it knowing the difference between right and wrong. In our Lord's creation, he invested a conscience in the flesh of humanity. When humans changed their co-perception to the leader of the underworld of evil, that conscience becomes seared. When that happens, the human becomes unreachable outside of a miracle of God. Morality is a complex and fascinating topic for the unregenerate mind. There are different ways to understand what morality means when it comes to human thought. In today's culture, it is a set of personal or social standards for good or bad behavior and character. However, biblically, it derives from arete, excellence and virtue of God. In order for Satan to rule the earth, he had to remove the original meaning and swap it out for personal and social standards. Through his successes, we discover the biblical description of immorality is of little value. Concluding, immoral is the removal of biblical excellence and virtue of God. Thus, sexual immorality is presently a misnomer to the masses, which keeps the ideology of spiritual, psychological, and physical masturbation active and addictive. The foolish Galatians were sucked into the undercurrents of the deeds of the flesh through Satan's emphasis on culture. Since he is well aware of the weaknesses of humans defending their culture over their beliefs in an unseen God, be it himself or the living God, his success was cemented as the norm for the saved or unsaved. This caused the Galatians to melt into religions versus that of the absolutes of God's holy word. Meaning, religions are birthed through culture, whereas the absolutes refute religions to centralize the immovable word of God. Sad to say, the Galatians became one of the first churches that imploded into plurality the mixture of authentic sainthood with devils of modern culture. The Galatians are today an example of what authentic believers should not do. Paul faced the Galatians with a question. Are you so foolish, having begun by the Spirit? Are you now being perfected by the flesh? That's right out of Galatians chapter 3, verse 3. This is a question that we should be asking ourselves. Here's the key. 
The law of the spirit of life is the only law that can overcome the misnomer of perfecting ourselves through fleshly efforts. John Gill phrased it this way, Is it possible you should be so stupid? Do you or can you continue to be stupid? Bluntly speaking, when we walk after the deeds of the flesh, we are truly functioning in the same stupid that blinds Satan. We seriously need to explore the biblical redemptive practicalities of our freedom to live in and through the law of the spirit of life. Go ahead, fall in love with yourself. Always remember, this comes with a price, that of losing life eternally in Christ. Jesus was not jesting when he said that whoever hates his flesh in this world will keep it for eternal life. I can honestly say I hate my flesh life. However, I can honestly say I love my life in Christ. My life in Christ is respectably not my life. I am owned and possessed by a life that paid the debt I could not pay. I am his, I am in him, he is in me, and the life I now live is releasing his life, not mine. Until next time. <laughs>